Now, I have to tell you, I'm feeling a little bit uneasy about this next house. It belongs to sculptor David Sharp, who has a taste for the mysterious. Here's a man with an all-consuming passion for the part. Well, a classical style, actually, uh, it's a 24-hour-a-day lifetime thing. I live it. From the outside, David Sharp's Derbyshire home seems what you'd expect from someone who makes a living sculpting in stone. He thrives on his image of mysterious artists, so much so that even his windowless home is hidden somewhere in the labyrinth of his sculpting studio and office. The flat itself is located in the centre of the building, so there are no outside windows. So I can lock myself away from the outside world very comfortably. I've made everything uh, uh, myself. The skulls, the, the, the secret bookcase, all the books are all, uh, all fake. Some of the oil paintings I've painted personally. And just about everything I've done myself. The original school we bought in Los Angeles in a, a body part supermarket where you can buy all manner of body parts and kept them old and we've used them around here. He's breaking for the ceiling. It's kind of like a, a, a Bedouin tent. It's just ordinary uh, cheap silk satin material off the market, very inexpensive. The lights, they're just ordinary fluorescent bulbs with blue perspex. The valve is attached to the walls simply on um, fiberboard. I do like big cats, I like leopard skin and tiger skin. And uh, uh, I've collected them over the years, usually by trading for some statues or something like that. So I don't know what they're worth in they're not, uh, I didn't buy them. This again was, uh, was traded from, for a statue. Died of natural causes, I'm told. Maybe if there's a party. I'll tell the story that uh, I had to kill it personally with my bare hands after it's taken the three children from the local village. <laughs> it's either him or me, and uh, I won. <laughs> <laughs> the room is designed for relaxation and a good time. You have a drink, take it easy, listen to the music, all the good things. And if David's lounge isn't hidden away enough, he's ensured that no one gets into his bedroom without a true sense of adventure. It, it can be a bit frightening when you go through the secret passage, particularly if it's the first time, because you don't know what to expect and you can't see what's on the other side. There's an automatic uh, uh, sensor that senses your presence as you walk through and then the lights come on to show you the way. The cave took David three weeks to create from Plaster of Paris. It's, it's kind of a feature, you know, crazy, I know, but, um, I, you know, it's fun. Gets a lot of good laughs sometimes. <laughs> so, what's so special about the bedroom? Well, really, total comfort, total luxury. No problem, no worries. Lock yourself away from the rest of the world, forget about it. Relax, take it easy, and dream. We've got a TV, that's all remote control TV and uh, stereo, CD, tape player, everything. You don't really need to leave the bed, in fact. Once you're in there, there's no real reason to get out. <laughs> it's self portrait I did uh, a couple of years ago when I was about uh, 29. <laughs> I think it's a little more handsome in those days. And um, then we've got the, the jacuzzi, which is again is a cave theme. And all very luxurious and it's 
it's all designed to be relaxing. The leopard was traded for a statue from a client of mine. Uh, his wife didn't particularly like it, uh, but I did. I think it's a beautiful creature and a great example, and uh, I think it looks real nice in the bedroom. I just do what makes me feel comfortable and relaxed and happy. I'm trying to do dark, as a matter of fact, and uh, sometimes uh, Sometimes going through the secret passages, I try to get through there as quick as possible when I'm on my own. It can be quite frightening. <laughs>